the question is that the bill be now read a second time. Engineer Dr. Lee Biwa. Mr. Speaker, sir, private hire car BHC services, which in the days of old used to be one of the modes of transport for those in the better off segment of society, is today an affordable transport option for many. And in spite of various issues enshrouding the BHC, the demand for their services has not abated. If at all, demand has in fact increased, and this is especially so for families with elderly and young children. And also for those with less mobile family members, as maneuvering around with buses and trains still has its challenges. The convenience of almost door-to-door -door service and with the driver to assist those on wheelchair, PHC is a good option. So, PHC drivers provide a necessary transportation service for the public. They complement our taxi drivers or compete with our taxi drivers. It depends on how you look at it. Hence, PSC drivers deserve to claim tax deductions and receive fair remuneration for their labour. Early this year, when it was about time to file for income tax return, many PSC drivers whom I met, some I met at a coffee shop, some they came to my Meet the People session and they asked, why is it that the expenses such as petrol, car parking are not allowed to be deducted against their income and end up they have to pay higher income tax? And that is why I spoke on this issue in Parliament before. And now they should be happy to hear about this amendment. But they have one concern. They say that some of the PSC drivers are full-time drivers, some are part-time drivers. So how is IRAS going to differentiate between these two categories of claim? So can Minister enlighten us? For fewer claims, I think this is quite straightforward as mileage clock for ferrying passengers will be recorded by the PSC's platform. But for parking and rental, it is next to impossible to identify how much of these expenses go into picking up passengers. And once some PSC drivers are approved to provide courier services, there will be further blurring of lines between work and personal. Undoubtedly, some PSC drivers are full-time drivers, and it would be somewhat unfair to deprive them from the same tax benefits as full-time taxi drivers. Sir, observing the current trend, the point-to-point -point service sector will only keep expanding. PSC platforms are enhancing their services to meet the needs for more courier services. In the meantime, we are seeing more ad hoc couriers on our roads. These are people who drive their own vehicles from cars, vans to motorcycles. They pay for parking. And in the case of motorcyclists, they have to pay for high motorcycle COEs, all of which come out of their own pockets. These are issues that I have already brought up in Parliament previously. I think it is important that the government recognise this trend and review the regulatory framework for this sector, including having an appropriate income tax regime for all these operators. If PSC drivers can claim income tax, will the Minister consider the inclusion of other self-employed delivery persons as well? Sir, Chinese, please. Rang si zao che si ji kou shui si ge hao zu yi. Bu guo si zao che he de si bu tong, mei you mei tian zui di li su de gui ding. Ru guo si ji da bu wen si jian ba che zi dang zi ji de che lai shi yong. 可能会滥用回扣并对全职的司机不公平。所以建议要扣税的私造车也要符合最低礼数或载客趟数的规定。此外，用自己的车辆全职送货的人也得付停车费和。
昂贵的电单车、拥车证等，为表公平，他们也应该得到税务回扣。So I support the bill, and I hope that it will come into effect before the filing of income tax for next year. Thank you.